I'm Justin McRoberts, and you are listening to the Title Pending Audio Series, a collection of readings focused on moments in my own creative history that I hope shed an inspired light on yours. Chapter 15. You really do want to critique. The most unsatisfying critical exchanges I've had are with folks who, in response to an honest request for critical feedback, respond with niceness. This is great, man. Sounds good. Love it. Now, there's nothing wrong with being encouraging. I want to know that what I've made is good. But I think thoughtful critique actually accomplishes that as well. If I offer you suggestions on how to make a piece of yours better, it's because I see something about your existing work that's worth taking the time to explore, expose, and build on. I want the lesser bits of your piece to get right or get lost so that it's better. Here is something true. It's easy to find folks who are willing to share their tastes and opinions about art. But finding or being someone who can offer actual critique, the kind that helps artists improve, is considerably more difficult. If you've got such persons in your life, count yourself lucky and blessed because you and I, if we were to call ourselves artists, need people like that. If you don't have such voices in your process, you'll have to ask for honest critique. I'd be willing to bet the people around you won't freely offer it. Instead, they'll assume you want them to be nice. If all you get is niceness, you're not going to grow. In the same way, if all you give is niceness, you might just be hindering someone else's creative process. When you're asked for your honest opinion on someone's work, give it. Don't just be nice. Don't just be negative either. Be thoughtful. Be honest. Give them the kind of critique you want and need. So here's some things to consider when offering an actual critique. 1. Ask for permission to be honest. Often enough, when I'm handed or sent something, the context is, let me know what you think. I've taken to responding with something like, I'd be happy to give you some feedback. If I don't like something about it, are you okay with me pointing it out? Two, actually take in the whole thing. Honor the work they've put in, as well as the risk they're taking in handing over their art. If you don't have time to do that, then say no. Three, Provide a hopeful framework. If you find things wrong with someone's work, help them want to improve or get rid of the bad stuff by helping them see that there's something good at hand. Start with answering the question, what makes the piece worth fixing? Four, keep it simple. Especially if there's a lot of work to be done, I'd suggest providing only a few more pivotal points. Sometimes the details are taken care of in the larger process. Sometimes an artist will come back to you for further insights. Five, keep it practical. When you see something that doesn't work, do your best to humbly provide ways that they can go about making it better. Try couching your suggestions and questions like, what do you think about adding more mauve kittens? Or would you be open to replacing that piano sound with the keytar. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Title Pending Audio Series. If you've enjoyed listening and you'd like to take another step or two in the direction of your own creative process, navigate your way to yourcreativeprocess.info. And there you'll find an online course I've designed for you.